Hello everybody, my name is Jordan Evans. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to support your kids in their private music lessons. I teach piano, but this applies to everything. And in some degrees, it could apply to things like sports, academics, anything. Just some tips that I've seen over the last like four or five years teaching lessons. Um, first off, I commend you if you're watching this video, you're being very intentional with your parenting and you wanna make sure that your kids are supported and get the most out of their lessons. I know for a lot of us, no, I had a great experience, but I know a lot of people, especially parents who come to my lessons saying they had a terrible experience, they didn't like their teacher, their parents were very strict on them, or their parents didn't support them in their lessons, and now they have nothing to show for all the time that they spent taking lessons. And if we're gonna invest the time and the money into this, we wanna make sure that we're getting the most out of it. So I'm just gonna share some of the things that I think um, have really helped my students and how the parents can just gently come underneath and support their kids. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is just sitting in on the lesson. Most teachers are okay with this and I encourage it. So if you're not able to, some circumstances of this is like if you're working remotely and you're dropping your kids off and you have stuff to do, or if you have other siblings of that child and you have to be with them during the lesson, totally understandable. But if you have the ability to just sit in on the lesson, maybe take some notes for yourself. Um, if this is brand new for the child and like you or your spouse aren't musicians yourself, you can actually take notes and learn with them. So that way when you're at home, you know what the music teacher covered with them and then you can help them and support them in that at home. And it also, the student seems to take it, depending on the kid's personality, they take it a little bit more seriously when the parents are around, um, just cause it's like, I guess a disciplinary figure, whereas they might not take it as seriously when it's just the teacher and the student one-on-one. -on -one. So just for myself, I've noticed a huge difference when the parents just sits in the room and pays attention during the lesson. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is just equipping them to succeed. So this could be as simple as finding a teacher that's a good fit, and I tell everybody this. Um, I, I'm a good teacher for some people, I'm not gonna be the best for other people, and I'll try and recommend them to someone who I think would be the best fit. So if you're a parent and you just notice that your kid's personality does not go well with the teacher, um, for most teachers, that doesn't offend me at all if a, a parent approached me like that, um, just because I, I, I agree, I want what's best for the student. Or if the instrument's not going well, don't be afraid to just flex and change to a different instrument. Or if music's just not their thing, don't be afraid to flex and go into art or gymnastics, anything else. So yeah, equipping them to succeed by finding a teacher that fits good with their personality, finding an instrument that per fits well with their personality. And then from here, if you're gonna go ahead and invest in the lessons and stuff, invest in a good instrument for them that makes them excited to go play. Give them a workspace at home where they have their own personal space where they can go practice. Um, I think a lot of kids do well if it's in their bedroom or if they have an electric keyboard they can put headphones in on and that way they can practice without anybody hearing them. And then also giving them like a clean and tidy environment where they feel equipped to do so. And then the other thing I was gonna talk about um, after we've equipped them with stuff is just always encouraging them. So no matter what they're doing, don't think they have to get it perfect right away. Be like, hey, I really appreciate you trying your best at this. Uh, and if you are a parent who's sitting on the lessons and they're trying their best, then that's when you can offer like gentle feedback to the student. Now the caveat to that, if the student's not trying their best and they're not putting forth good effort, that's something you can also be honest with. Be like, hey, I noticed you're not trying, trying very hard at this or putting your full effort. Do you not enjoy it? What are some things I can do to make it fun for you? And then from there, those are conversations you can have with the teacher. So what kind of music do we need to be working on for this to be exciting for the student? Now there is some degree of, as learning music, we have to cover certain bases, um, but how can we make this more fun and exciting for the student? And then the other thing I wanna talk about is what are some of the benefits of music? Like what are some positive habits that I as a teacher can be instilling, you as a parent can be hoping for? Um, I would just say the ability to sit down and learn something really difficult. So something I like to do for my students is give them a list of things and you gotta go through your technique. You gotta work on this piece. You gotta work on this piece. Here's some musicianship stuff that I want you to work on. That's like actually understanding how to read and understand music, uh, maybe like music history, stuff like that. And I don't like to overwhelm my kids. Depending on their age, if they're young, I only give them like 10 minutes of stuff to do a week. If they're older, I might jump that up to like 30, 45 minutes. And if they're really serious about learning, like 60 to 90 minutes um, or more. So I like to give them a five day plan where try and find the same time every day, I'm gonna sit down and do this. It doesn't have to be perfect right away, but I'm gonna put forth my best effort for just three to five minutes in improving this and setting a goal to improve it. 
And these things are invaluable. Um, if you can teach a six or a seven year old how to sit down and focus on something, that's gonna translate into their academics. Or when they're playing soccer and they're trying to learn how to kick the ball just right, or when they're in math class and they have to memorize certain formulas, they're gonna have built that focus and determination through their piano practice. And just encouraging the kids to see the um, benefits of work over time. I do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes the next day, 10 minutes the next day. Wait a second, this is actually starting to compound and I'm getting even better. And that's when the kid starts getting really excited to do it. Um, I would never, I would suggest outside of that, never use music as a punishment or punish them for not wanting to practice. We don't want to associate any kind of negative feelings with that. Um, which I know is hard to do sometimes, but this is something that has to be built out of a positive reinforcement, um, which I don't know. I'm not a parent yet. I'm about to have my first child actually two months from now. We're really close. And I'm just thinking from an outside perspective, in a perfect world, we would only encourage through positive reinforcement. But I'm sure there is, depending on the kid's personality, sometimes where I don't want to say punishment, but you need to say, hey, if you don't get this done, you're not going to have this privilege or you can't do this. Like this is something that we're making a priority in our family. And then that would be my last tip. Make this a family thing. So if the kid has siblings, maybe the other siblings are playing an instrument. And then maybe at dinner time, we can talk about what we worked on during the day. Or once a week, we schedule like family performance night where each kid gets to show off what they've been working on. And it's not just you're in the room listening to them. We are coming together as a family. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna pay attention to you. And then we're gonna give each other feedback and maybe even we do a sing-along as a family, um, which I know feels so silly, especially if you're not musicians, but I think those things are really impactful for the kid to find those like cultural routines and traditions to get into. So that's something I look forward to doing. I hope to have a big family um, one day. We're just about to have our first kid, but even then, having time where we get together and share music with one another, um, even if you're not the best singer, even if you're not a musician, maybe you can try too. Um, so yeah, just to cover everything real quick, I really encourage you to sit in on the lesson, take notes, and then have the teacher give the child like a, a, a schedule of things to practice during the week. And then with that being said too, find a teacher that fits for the kid. And then is in regards to helping, equipping them, give them a space to practice, give them a time to practice. Maybe your kid's a, a lark, which is like a morning person, or they're an owl, they're a night person. If they're a lark, fit it into their morning getting ready for school routine, short as 10 minutes. So we're getting ready for school. This is something I'm giving you the responsibility of doing. Or when they get home in the afternoon, they're doing their homework. I'm making this responsibility as part of your homework. Or maybe if they're a late person, um, and I'm not saying like too late. For a kid, late is like 7.30. After dinner, we're going to do this as a family, and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to help you if you need help. Um, yeah, if you guys have any thoughts or anything, if there's other teachers here, parents, you tell me what's worked well for you. If anyone has any questions, I'd love to be a resource. And what's cool is I'm a small YouTuber. So if you leave a comment, I'm probably gonna see it and I can make a video about it. So thank you guys so much. If you like this content, uh, think about subscribing to the channel because I'm gonna be posting lots of like piano tutorials, music tutorials, tips for teachers, tips for educators, and yeah, just musicianship stuff in general. So thank you guys so much. Best of luck this school year in equipping your children to succeed and I'll see y'all next time.